It's Feedback Gaming. Welcome back to my Germany series, playing and showing off the Navy of Man, the guns. We're going to invade Poland, we're going to take out France. Probably not going to see much of that. Now we've got to prepare for war, so we've got a six separate destroyer on a fleet here. We're going to merge those boys up, and then we're going to put our fleet on escort here. We haven't got any trade at the moment, so we don't need to defend any convoys, but we are going to make sure that we convoy raid this area as much as possible. And I can manage to cover all three zones with my escort fleet. There's a lot going on here, so it's kind of hard to make out. But you can see that there's one fleet here that is on an escort job within these three sea zones. And we have two, we have another fleet here with two task forces, which are combo raiding in the upper and lower Baltic Sea. What I'm going to do now is right click to add an additional mission order in a different sea tile by selecting here. Okay, so what we're going to do is just expand our area we're going to be covering with combo raiding. So we're going to go for the Danish area here, we're going to go for the Eastern North Sea and the Norwegian coast. As you can see now, we are covering too much area and it says the efficiency of these submarines will be a penalty due to lack of overall ships. Uh, this can be alleviated by adding more ships to the task forces and it can also be alleviated by splitting them into smaller task forces. Okay, we've had an engagement here and it says it's in the lower Baltic. We can click here to zoom in on this battle and we can see that we have 44 British submarines and 14 French submarines and they're trying to raid within this area more than likely they want to take this trade route here so there's uh three convoys being traded through this area from here to East Prussia just a brief summary of the new combat screen here you can see the positioning if you're on the wrong order and you enter battle with bad positioning you'll suffer from penalties across the board hence what we have here uh, also, you can indicate light guns, which are good against screening ships. You have heavy guns, which are good against capital ships. You have torpedoes that do heavy damage, uh, but tend to have to be fired when they get relatively close, uh, which is the speciality of submarines. You've got anti-air, which is good against anti-air, and you have depth charges, which is the counter to submarines. The beauty of these stats, too, is if you hover over them, it gives you a breakdown if damage has been dealt to the opposing fleet. You also have the button in the middle, disengage. This is a new one. This is so awesome. And it does what it says. It basically just says, we can't win this battle. Let's get the hell out of here. Let's look for a path into the Netherlands and Belgium. Right, we're going to focus on heavy ship. We're going to make heavy ship three the whole. And we're also going to get the armors with it as well. So we're going to try and make a heavily armored. We're going to make a heavily armored tank ship. Let's fulfill the role of taking damage and also dealing it. Let's work on some amphibious tanks for the lols. Look at that beauty. <laughs> hey, this is uh, historical. <laughs> hmm, does this look familiar? Hmm. This is beautiful. Oh boy, we've Dunkirk them. Time to leave. So this will be a good time to talk about convoys and convoy raiding mechanics. So when a convoy is being raided, it's represented by this. This re represents the convoys. This re represents the people hunting the convoys. So French subs hunting my convoys. And also conveniently now, if you hover over this icon here, it tells you what it is. These are freight convoys. So these are going to moving supplies or materials from, from trade. In this case, it says it's a troop transport because this one division has gotten stuck and is deciding to leave into the English Channel, which we press F2. You can see there are between 143 and 161 enemy ships here. This is not a good place to be. So there is a way to say the AI, just never go here. Don't ever go here. In this case, if we select the sea tile and we go down here and it says this access is blocked, trade routes will never pass through this region and fleets will never pass through this region unless there are no other route. We do that now. And you can see this is check it out now. And now the AI will selectively never choose to deploy their troops into this area. So these are British troop transports that are evacuating out the fall of the Netherlands. And our, our, convo our subs have tried to intercept, but they're the whole of the British fleet is here. Oh boy, deja vu. So as you can see here, this ship has its torpedo tubes disabled. So early on, we found out that Pride of the Fleets are less likely to sustain critical hits. And that is what this submarine has sustained. It has had a critical hit. Oh, damn. This is beautiful. Rip France. Oh, it's so lonely. That one British division. Get him, Rommel. One thing that's important to know is in the naval tech tree here, 
There are things that are modules, hulls, and passive bonuses. So for instance, these are modules. They need to be added onto the ship to use them. This is a passive bonus that just affects ships. So the advantage of knowing this is that when you build your ships, you can avoid the passive bonuses until you're going to be in direct combat. For instance, these are passive bonuses that improve ammunition. You don't need to spend any production. This will give you a massive bonus for attack for your ships, as well as damage control and fire control methods. Once again, passive bonuses can be boosted with naval XP and don't cost you any extra production costs. If you are a Patreon, which is a feedbacker on my Discord, I've made a chart that shows the holes, the passive bonuses, and the modules. So you can easily see which ones to research and what order to research them. Just hop onto my Discord and click on the feedbacker chat. Right, let's plan a naval invasion. It works the same way as it did prior to man the guns. It does seem to be a little bit more flexible where you can drop your troops. And I like to launch them as wide as possible to try and land, grab as much land as I can. Let's make sure our ships are in the right position for this plan. So we don't need them in the Baltic. We just need them in the Eastern North Sea and the Danish belt. So let's move them there. This is something else I didn't mention before as well. If you individually click each one, they'll break off as a separate task force and go back to repair. But if you hold shift, you can select multiple ones and they'll all break off as in a task force together. That might actually be safer because they'll be traveling as a pack. So if they do get intercepted, uh, they're less likely to just be picked off one at a time. Let's make our dream battleship. Now build ships, select the battleship. And we're going to go with the 1940 heavy hull. The question time. What is the difference between a battleship and a battle cruiser? It is the armor. If you assign this with battleship armor, it will be considered a battleship. If you assign this with a battle cruiser armor, it will be a battle cruiser. So what's the difference? Battleships are more heavily armored and battle cruisers are slightly less arm heavily armored. Uh, but they have more speed because of it. Just to do something a little bit different, a little bit ahistorical, we're going to go with a battle cruiser. We're going to put the heaviest engine on too to get the extra speed. We're going to go for a we're going to go for a dual purpose secondary armament so it has anti-air as well as light attack. Remember light attack is good against screening ships and anti-air is good against planes. We need to put the most up to date radar on for sub detection and surface detection. We're going to pop on fire control. We're going to have an anti-air module. And the main battery is going to be the biggest one we can do. And as you can see, it's so heavy, it reduces the speed of the ship. Now, if we wanted to, we could load this with more modules, but it has an impact on speed and it will have an impact on production costs. So for this ship to be as fast as possible, I'm going to just aim to have two batteries on this one. And that'll do. Speed is 37 knots, which is still pretty fast. All right, so let's go ahead with our plan to take out Denmark and Norway. So this will give us access to convoy raiding at the Atlantic. Denmark, rip. One order I forgot to mention was naval invasion support, and it does what it says. It's, it's a combination of escort, so it will defend the convoys as they move forward before they launch other beaches, and two, it'll move the capital ships closer to the shoreline, and what that will do is give shore bombardment, and that's exactly what they're gonna do. Now you can see here, shore bombardment, 18%. There we go, we've landed, nice. So we're having a few supply problems in Norway. One minute will say 16 maximum supply, next minute will say two. The reason why is these X's here. These indicate that this supply route is being disturbed. And more than likely, it's because these convoys on the way, from the way from Germany to Norway are being intercepted. In that case, we need to withdraw from this zone and just focus on the zones inside of our supply route let's start producing our battleships wait no not battleships battle cruisers so now you can only assign a maximum of five naval dot yards for capital ships uh, 10 for screens and submarines and a full 15 for convoys this is just to contain that how many you can pump out in a short period of time which did feel a bit late game in hoi for a little bit ridiculous how you could pump out a carrier every six months. So we're gonna make six of these babies. That's right, you heard me right, six of them. The what we do need the most is chromium. But conveniently, we're now at war with Yugoslavia, so we might be able to get some chromium from uh, the Macedonians. I'm not really happy how things are going in Norway right now. We're taking our, taking our time just 
gradually pushing northwards. So, Rommel's here to uh, sort this one out. So a little tactic that works quite well for preserving oil is not to use air superiority. If I go air superiority, I find myself losing pretty much all my oil instantly. But if I go for interception, it basically just means is the planes will only launch into the sky once they are spotted an enemy. So they're going to be on the ground until then. In that case, we're not going to be using oil because they're not going to be constantly on patrol looking for enemies. All right, let's execute our sub missions then so we're going to grab all of you guys so we're going to add all the uh, reserves onto this fleet we are going to move all of you to here so they wouldn't usually move here they won't let me go through this area because this area is blocked off but if you can override that by holding control and right clicking and they'll forcefully go through these areas they weren't allowed to there we go perfect oh my damn this fighter wing is a veteran 20% extra air attack, 30% agility. I want to give it an A so then it does even more damage. That is insane. So what we're going to do is select all of these fleets, give them a convoy raiding order, cancel off the previous orders, and we're going to go for here, we're going to go for here, here, and here, here, and here. To be honest with you, I kind of want to select as many zones as we can that we're able to until it says we're having some kind of issue with efficiency of the convoy raiding. These areas, as you can see, as I hover over them, it says there's a lot of enemy ships. So I'm trying to avoid those areas. And as you can see, we've intercepted a ton of convoys in this area, but they do have escorts. We are hitting some of them, though, but we are taking some, uh, some losses as well. So what you can see now is all the engagements we're involved in. You can see here two naval invasions in the Iberian coast. We're invasion two further engagements in the North Atlantic Ridge and one in the Central Atlantic Gap. What you've got here is the icon and you can say what you would do with this menu to avoid these areas if you're finding there's a lot of resistance. So in this case, if they're hitting, defending their convoys exceptionally well in the African coast, you don't want to be losing submarines. So you could say that area is all out bounds. In that case, you just mark it as no. You've got these little battles here. You can click on them to find their results or you can click on the summary underneath the mission here and it'll go through them one by one for you. The icons mean different things. This is a battle summary for a battle that's already happened. And this is a, currently a battle that's going on at the moment. Okay, so the plan is to bleed out the UK convoys. They have 600 to 700, so we need to get that number down. Okay, so it looks like they've made, moved their main fleet into the Norwegian Sea. So in this case, I'm going to do what they recommend. I'm going to disengage here and it says here the norwegian sea so we'll select this area and mark it off not to go into that zone let's have another conversation about fuel so this current ship we're producing has a fuel consumption of 97 the destroyer we're constructing has a fuel consumption of seven and the submarine has also a fuel consumption of nine it goes without saying that capital ships use a lot of fuel a lot a lot a lot and we're gonna show you with strike forces why it's bad not to have them actively on missions in in sea zones because they will consume a huge amount of fuel it wouldn't be man the guns if i didn't take advantage of amphibious tanks right <laughs> quite fun to keep an eye on when you ever you intercept convoys you can see these are freights in this case these are troop transports so the greeks are going to lose troops here it's easy to get lost in all these battles and all these numbers and it's kind of like am i is this convoy rating working or is it not so you can go into the naval screen and go into lost ships and you can select a faction or a country and then you can select a time period so in this case we can go the current month we have sunk one convoy which is only the first of december so in that case we go last month we down a convoys we sunk a total of 81 in the last year so now we can plan an invasion of the UK. Now they're both in the English Channel. The way it kind of works, Naval Invasion Order, is similar to Strike Force. They will only come out when there's an active mission that they can actually be involved in. So in this case, it needs to wait for a Naval Invasion Order to be activated for them to come out and give shore bombardment and protect the convoys. In this case now, we're going to activate Rommel's amphibious tanks. Look at these beauties. And then we're going to land into the UK. Oh my god, look at this. <laughs> that is beautiful. That is simply 
Beautiful. Gonna keep an eye on uh, our supply routes as well. In this case, the supply efficiency is very low, so we're getting low supply, so we need to escort our fleets. So we're gonna select you guys. Put you on escort. Rip UK. Got him. When I wasn't looking, a close air support sunk one, but two of my battle cruisers. Damn, naval bombers are so strong. Oh, the pride of the fleet only had 7% strength left. Oh, damn. This uh, pre dreadnoughts had some uh, critical hits sustained to it, heavy fires, and secondaries knocked out. These only get removed if you get back to 100% strength after being fully repaired. So, if there's a lesson to take from this, never have your fleet in an area where you don't have air superiority. Because that's the only reason why the torpedoes could land on this battle cruiser. Because I had no planes within this air zone. Zero. Ha! Ah, we've spotted them in the western approaches. He's arrived in battle now. And you said the position is 85%. If it had to travel a long distance, pretty much through the old Atlantic Ocean, the position will be bad in that case. It's pretty much better to have the strike force in a port near where the spotters are. And we arrived and we only intercepted the screening ships. The capitals got away. I was kind of hoping that... I was hoping that my battle cruisers will be so fast, they'll be able to intercept everything and just like... Rip apart all the carriers and whatnot. So look, my battle cruisers have arrived right now. We completely outgunned them. Heavy guns are doing damage. The light guns are doing damage. The positioning is fairly decent. We've got a bit of a penalty to our position due to the fact our fleet significantly larger than theirs. Uh, but for the most part, we did really well there. The game incentivizes just small wolf packs. Small spotting, small convoy raiding. And the smaller the fleet that you've got, the better when it arrives and the better the position it will be. I think that's just to represent if you had a large fleet, it would be very difficult to micromanage this huge fleet. So it's kind of... It's better for effectiveness in combat for a smaller fleet. Well, guys, that's pretty much it. I think I've gone through most of the base mechanics. There are a few questions that I don't know the answer to at the moment. Be aware of the date or when this video is released. Most of these questions will be answered in future. The most effective build, the min-maxing, won't be developed for maybe a month or two from now. I think I've showed you enough of the naval mechanics to understand them. If you have any questions about the actual mechanics, the UI itself, anything about the mechanics of how things work, feel free to comment below. If you do want to support me on Patreon, the link is in the description below. You'll get access to these videos early, and you'll also find out from me in my feedback early access chat on my Discord what I'm currently up to and what products I'm currently working on. If you're up for that and you're interested in that, being a patron is what you need to do. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and to subscribe. Always remember to hit that bell, otherwise your subscription means nothing. I hope you have an awesome day, and I will see you guys next time. See you soon, boys. Bye-bye.